<laughs> Roommate number 27. <laughs> So do you want me to be your roommate or not, Bess asked. We were on the end train, returning from Barnes & Noble, where I met Bess for a second time. It was the end of the month, and I was desperate. Yes, I said. That was my first mistake. <laughs> Bess was in journalism school, and now worked as a reporter for a local newspaper. Three months after moving in, she quit her job complained bitterly about being unemployed and increasingly became more depressed. I'll never get a job. Those snobs, they only hire graduates from Columbia, Bess whined. If you got out of your pajamas and left the apartment, maybe you'd have a better chance of finding a job. That was my second mistake. <laughs> then she met Mark. They spent most evenings across the street at Lugo's drinking and making out at the bar. Most of the bar flies ignored them, except those looking for a fight. Halfway into the month, she informed me she was moving out to live with Mark and asked for her security deposit. No way, I said. We had an agreement to give notice on the first of the month. You can't walk out now. Bess retreated into her room. The following evening, I arrived home to find Mark photographing each room in my apartment. Hey, this is my private space. Put down the camera. Mark yelled at me and told me I was no longer allowed to speak to Bess. <laughs> She's my roommate and I want to speak with her directly, not through you. She's no longer speaking with you. Besides, you better return her security deposit. If not, I'll make your life miserable. I'll ruin your credit and ruin you financially. Get out! Get the fuck out of here, I screamed, and phoned my friend Jonathan, who lived two blocks away. Be there in a minute. I'll beat the shit out of the guy. <laughs> That's okay, Jonathan. I can handle this. If it gets worse, I'll call you. I stepped into the hallway, and in a calm, authoritative voice, I asked Mark to leave. Give her the money, he shouted at me as he hovered, he shouted as he hovered over me and pinned me against my bedroom door. You better get the fuck out or I'll call the police. A few days later, I received a summons from housing court. The bloodhound reporter and her sidekick were after me. I charged her an additional $40 a month in a rent-stabilized apartment. With no other recourse, I made an appointment to see a landlord-tenant lawyer who advised me to pay back the additional rent. I also learned that a verbal agreement would not hold up in court. Now I was out the security deposit and a couple of hundred dollars, not to mention in two weeks I had to find another roommate. <laughs>